Let us run here with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you pray the iniquity of my sin. And pause for a moment of silent confession before our God. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. When I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce God's grace unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus, I do forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together today the words of the intro, and I'll put it on the insert in your bulletin.
Because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Son of God, 
gave heaven from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is so by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Exactly what they were teaching. Many times 
country even contradicted what they were teaching. And since they couldn't point to anything specifically wrong with what Jesus had been preaching directly, they kept trying to trip him up into saying something. Something that they could latch on to. Something they could use to discredit him. After all, they didn't like him. He was stealing their limelight. The crowds were following and listening to him instead of them. And this was hurting both their pride and their pocketbook. Now at the time when Jesus came to this earth, those religious leaders had come up with all kinds of extra things that they considered to be equal with God's holy law. They didn't think that the Ten Commandments of God were sufficient. So they made up more things. And they called this group of things that they came up with the tradition of the elders. And it included so many minutia things within it that there was no way that the common person could even know what was completely in it or even keep it no matter how hard they tried. To this, Jesus responded, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. So instead of adding to God's holy law, after the lawyer asked Jesus this question, Jesus instead simplified. He shall said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. Only two. You should be able to do that, right? Wait a minute, Adam and Eve only had one. They messed it up. At least two. Love God and love others as yourself. Honestly, no human being on their own can possibly love this perfectly, love this completely. If we're honest with ourselves, we will have to admit that we have failed. We have failed miserably at both of these great commandments. We have not loved God in all that we are. And we definitely have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. That's the bad news. But I have good news for you today. Where we fail, Jesus fulfills. Jesus says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Jesus is the fulfiller. In not only what he teaches us, but also in what he did for us and what he continues to do for us. Jesus is the faithful Son of God and the Savior of his people. He truly loves God, his Father, completely. So completely, in fact, that when he was facing the most horrible, torturous death on earth that mankind has ever combined and come up with in their sick minds, facing death for you and for me, Jesus said to his Father, not my will, but yours be done. He completely fulfills his Father's will. He did that when he left all the glory of heaven and came here to be one of us. Was born into a stinking animal stall and his first bed was an animal feeding trough. Throughout his life he suffered rejection, hatred, betrayal, beatings, crucifixion, and death. Why? Because that was the Father's will. That was the Father's plan to save us from sin 
and from death and from hell. Jesus truly loves God his Father first and always in everything that he is. He gave to his Father his perfect obedience and then he credited that perfect life to you and me in exchange for our cross. That's how much God, Jesus, loves God for you. And then there is that loving your neighbor as yourself. Humankind has never been good at this. Eve loved temptation more than her husband and brought him into sin with her. And we have all been just as selfish ever since. Now there are rare appearances where someone will love another human being as much or maybe even more than themselves. St. Paul actually acknowledges this in his letter to the Romans where he writes, perhaps a good person for a good person, one would dare to even die. And yet we are all guilty, most of the time, of loving ourselves before others. Even loving ourselves to the detriment of others. That's because we're sinners. And the foundation of all sin is selfishness. So good news. Jesus again is the fulfiller of the law in our place. Where St. Paul went on to write, when God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's how much he loves you for God. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. And you are Jesus' friend. He lived. He died for you. He did and he does everything for you, for our salvation. And it is only because of this that instead of mourning over our sin, we can rejoice in the fulfillment of our Savior. Jesus loved his Father above all else, so he willingly obeyed his Father's will. He came to be our Savior. He fulfilled God's law in our place perfectly, and then suffered everything that we deserve and died in our place. Jesus loves his neighbor, us, and all of mankind more than, themself, more than himself, and he demonstrated this in the fact that while we were still sinners, he died for us. He says, I have called you friend, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. The love that Jesus showed to us, his neighbor, all of mankind, is to do everything needed to be our Savior, and then to preach to us and teach to us all that we need to receive this salvation and to live in it to the very end of our days. So may we then, by the power of the Holy Spirit, endeavor to respond in love, in love to God, by our faithfulness to Him, and therefore respond to our neighbors, to all mankind, to love them enough to proclaim to them, too, salvation in Jesus. So instead of this morning lamenting over how much we have failed, let us rejoice this morning in what Christ has done to fulfill where we have failed. Let us rejoice that though we have not loved God, and we have not loved others as ourselves, that we are forgiven. We are forgiven for breaking these two great commandments of God. And we are forgiven by the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has washed us clean and made us perfect.
Let us rejoice through the power of the gospel and the washing of the water of the Spirit and holy baptism that we have been forgiven of all of those times that we have failed. Let us rejoice that we are given now the opportunity to go from this place where we are forgiven out into the world and to witness about our Savior and to lead others into this new beautiful life of faith that we have been given in Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice that we are clothed not in our sins but in the very righteousness of Jesus Christ. We are washed clean by His blood. Let us rejoice that where we have failed, Jesus has fulfilled for us, for all of us. And let us finally rejoice as we respond in forgiving confidence together. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God who passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds from Christ Jesus unto life of the last day. Amen. Oh. 
poor, the lonely, those who travel, those who mourn, those who cry out to you in their time of need, especially all of those who have asked for our prayers. Today especially we pray for Kelly, for Steve, for all of the victims of the storms this past week, for comfort and her family, for Cindy and Charlie, for Terry and Marcia, Walker and EJ, Susie, Mary and Helen, Amy and Summer, for our homebound friends of Pam, Carl, Norma, Linda, Sandra, and all those who we now lift up before you in our hearts. Grant that your holy angel may be with them always, that the evil foe may have no power over them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father in heaven, your Son instituted this holy supper for the forgiveness of our sins. Give us humble hearts to receive this blessed sacrament with thanksgiving, and strengthen us from the same for our lives of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And everlasting God, we have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament of the beginning on page 194. The Lord be with you.
in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.